It seems like this song we're about to sing has been sung every Sunday, but it seems to be so appropriate for the time that we're living in, that this is the day, that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice, and we shall rejoice. No matter what's going on in this world, we shall rejoice, because if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Oh, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this, is, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. 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 
But this is the day. Falls afresh, falls 
smells afresh on us. Hallelujah. If you weren't welcome before, you're welcome now to St. Matthew's Temple Church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Where our pastor is none other than superintendent. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! Reverend J.L. Griffin. Hi. Glory, Jesus. We thank you for tuning in. Ha! Na, 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 na. See ya. We thank you for watching us on YouTube, Facebook Live. Hi, glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're not here, you're missing it. Hallelujah. But I know that there is no secret what God can do. So where you are right now, he can reach you where you are. And I, I encourage you to tap in, to tap in. Because God can do just what he said he will do. Hallelujah. We're going to go on with the furtherment of our service. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It's something when you allow the spirit of God to have free course. You know, so many times we put stipulations and we're on time limits. But yet we want him to work in our time. Oh, that don't work that way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Come on and stand to your feet. We're going to have our prayer. And after prayer, we're going to have the scripture reading. Amen. By our very own evangelist. Hallelujah. Yvonne Irvin. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your many blessings, God. We thank you, God, because we realize there's nothing great that we have done, but it's your grace and your mercy, God, that's been sufficient for us, God. We thank you for the prayers of the righteous. We thank you for the prayers of the righteous, God. We thank you for the prayers of the righteous, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, God. If we had a thousand tongues, we wouldn't be able to praise you enough. We wouldn't be able to give you all the honor and all the glory that's due unto your matchless name. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. Lord, we thank you for touching him with a live coal of fire from on high. Lord, we thank you for allowing him to walk in the authority that you've given unto him, God. Lord, we thank you for his leaders. Lord, we thank you for his helpmate, God. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the saints of God here and everywhere. Lord, we thank you for the evangelists and the missionaries that are on the field doing your work, God. We thank you for them. Continue to cover them with your hedge of protection, God. In the name of Jesus, wherever you may be sending them, God. Protect them, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our prayer warriors. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for the renewing of our minds, God. We thank you for the renewing of the mind of the saints of God. We thank you for the renewing of the mind, God, for this world, God. Lord, the world needs you as never before, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, transform, God, by the renewing of their mind. Lord, we ask you that you would do it, that you would continue to give your men and your women, God, the holy boldness to stand in the world, to stand in this dying world as never before, God, knowing that you got them, God, knowing that you'll never leave them and you'll never forsake them, God. Help us continue to be a pillar in this world. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let our yea be yea and our nay be nay. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we'll continue to give you the honor. We'll continue to give you the praise. We'll continue to give you the glory that is due unto you, God. And all these things and unmentioned things, God, we ask in your name, God. Let everybody say amen. 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 Now we'll have a scripture reading. Amen. Please remain standing by our very own evangelist, Yvonne Irving. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. This reading will be coming from the 122nd edition of Psalms in its entirety. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls. 
and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. May God have the blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And all those that agree said amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to have uh, two few announcements. Amen. Praise God. Um, <clears throat> I've been announcing this for the last couple of Sundays. And this Wednesday, we're asking everyone to please, 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 if you have nothing else to do, please meet us at Munson Williams. This Wednesday will be the Community Equality Forum at Munson Williams. Proctor Institute, amen, at 6 o'clock. We're asking the church to please show up. This has everything to do with us, amen? Amen. It's from 6 to 8.30. This is the time to allow your voice to be heard, amen? This is the time for what you talk about at home to be outside, <laughs> amen, amen. Because, you know, we, we talk a lot amongst our our family members and our friends or what we think the community should be doing. But this is now the time for you to tell somebody else, like the leaders, and for them to hear it. Amen. Because sometimes, you know, I always say that if the common folks did politics, it would be right. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, we get so many upbeat people in there, they just kind of forget about what one and one is too, you know. <laughs> so this is the time for you to come out and do that. Next Sunday is Fourth Sunday, and as I stated before, our very own First Lady is asking everyone to please wear pink. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amen. We thank God because our First Lady is a survivor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She is. I'm a survivor. Yes. Hallelujah. And not just her. We have other members in our congregation. Amen. Hallelujah. That are survivors. Amen. Because of God's grace and mercy. We thank God for science. Amen. We thank God for doctors. Hallelujah. He gave them the wisdom to do what they do. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God for that. So next Sunday, don't forget to wear your pink. And also, don't forget to do your monthly examination, self-examinations. And if you haven't gone and got yours done, your yearly examination, it's free in New York State, whether you have insurance or not. It is free for men and women. Yes, men have been diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's important that you get that done. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to catch our breath for 2.3 seconds, and now we're going to have a selection, amen, by our praise team. And after the praise team, amen, you will hear none other than our leader, our pastor, amen, superintendent, Reverend J.L. Griffin. And when he comes, we're asking everyone to please rise to your feet in honor of the man of God. Amen? Amen. Come on, praise team. Come on, Elder Clark. <laughs> Any mistakes, take it as a token love, but he did it. <laughs> Yes, amen. The title of this song is called Trust God. And I know that it's uh, apparent that in the last two years, we have trust God. <laughs> we have definitely trust him. We have definitely believed in his word. Amen. If we've never read his word before or prayed as much as before, we did it in the last two years. Amen. Amen. So we're going to trust God that he will do just what he said he will do. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, 
tell him thank you. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're delighted today for those of you that are in the services live and for those of you listening by way of YouTube and Facebook. Glad for all our visitors and friends that are with us today. Truly the Lord is in this place. I have felt the moving of the Lord from the beginning of the service. I invite you today to be mindful that God is not through blessing you. The Lord has given me today to speak to you from the 40th chapter of the, God, of the book of Isaiah. Chapter 40, Isaiah, Missionary Irving will read verses 27 through 31. Isaiah 40, 27 through 31. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? 
that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Oh God. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Yes. But they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mount up with wings as an eagle. And they shall run. They shall run. And not be weary. And not be weary. And they shall walk. They shall walk. And not faint. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. I want to share with you again today the subject God called you to be an eagle. Say that to your neighbor. Neighbor, God called you to be an eagle. The eagle is a very familiar and popular bird in the Holy Scriptures. If you'll notice its regal presence, its reputation, Sister Merlin, as the king of birds, its dwelling in high and lofty places, the freedom of an eagle, its strength and its speed really epitomizes its majestic flight. In the sight of the biblical writers, it made the eagle a fitting symbol of God's greatness in particular and greatness in general. The eagle is also an appropriate symbol for the greatness that is inherent in each and every one of us. Now, although the eagle is classified as a fowl, the eagles are not as easily produced as chickens and other birds. Eagles are not hatched in what we call broods. Their reproductive cycle is not an overnight process. Chickens may be produced in 21 days and made ready for the market in anywhere from seven to nine weeks. But eagles take time to produce. It takes time to produce greatness. It is said that in this country of the United States that every 13 seconds a child is born. But when you start talking about Booker T. Washington, you start talking about Marian Andersons. And you start talking about George Washington Carvers and Martin Luther King Jr.'s. These kind of people are produced once every so often. For it takes time to produce special and great people. Well, when I read the biblical account of creation, I'm really struck by the fact that God took the time to make man. If you notice, God just spoke. When he spoke, the sun, the moon, and the stars all came into existence. He decreed that the firmaments come into being. God just declared. He just spoke. And fish started swimming in the sea. Mammals stopped roaming the earth. Birds began flying in the air. Simply because God spoke. But when it came to man, God had to take time and call the triune trinity together. And after a discussion between the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they did not speak man into existence, 
But the Bible said God made man. He took man and woman and made them in his image. Greatness takes time. Another characteristic of the eagle is that the eagle is a solitary bird. The eagle dares to fly Brother Robert alone. Eagles never fly in flocks. If you happen to see an eagle, you will see one or two at the most. They are solitary birds. And God is looking for eagle men and women today. Men and women that are willing to fly alone. Men and women who are not afraid to stand, walk, and run alone, and even if necessary, fly alone. Thank you, Jesus. Even if it means being misunderstood. Even if it means being left alone. God wants some eagle people, people who are willing to submit to being solitary. He's looking for people who would dare to dream dreams and see visions of things that are not instead of having nightmares. Talking about what you cannot do. God is looking for ego people to see things that are not and then have a vision, have strength to bring into existence that which is not. Now, it is true that a person is not an island, sufficient unto him or herself, but you'll never become fully what you should be in God until you learn to become solitary and learn to walk alone with God. Oh, I don't indict it, but I do believe that sometimes, some days, you ought to turn off Facebook and get face to face with God. I think sometimes you don't need to necessarily post on social media. I need you to understand that God wants some eagles to know he's already posted. He's posted 66 books. And sometimes instead of us reading what God has posted, we're worried about somebody faking it and somebody putting stuff out there that's really not real. Oh, I might get in trouble, but that's all right. God wants people that are willing to be solitary and learn to walk alone with him. You do remember that he was alone when God made Jacob a prince. Yeah. The record is that Moses was by himself when God called him from a burning bush. Elijah and Elisha did their greatest works when they were alone. God decided that he was going to save Israel through Gideon. But when the angel appeared, Gideon was by himself. Paul, with all of his Greek learning and having the privilege to sit at the feet of Gamaliel, Paul, when it came time to preach, had to get away in Arabia and spend time with God before he could really preach. Well, you do recollect John the Revelator. We love to talk about him on the island of Pat. But Patmos, Dr. Tucker, was a place that people were not surrounding you. It was a place that you were in solitary confinement, if you will. And when they could not stop John from preaching, they banned him to the island of Patmos. But out there by himself, and no one but God with him. It afforded John the opportunity to say that I was in the spirit. Some of us are not going to get in the spirit until we learn to get alone. God called to be an eagle. That we sometimes, for the sake of those that really believe, that we must be prepared to fly like an eagle. 
Being an ego person, church can be a lonely experience because not everybody understands ego people. The strange thing about the nature of people, what we don't understand, we like to either try to attack or kill. So you've got to know that people are fearful of you when they don't understand you. Some folks don't understand why you just don't participate in certain stuff. Some people don't understand why you don't just say certain things. You need to tell them it's because I'm an eagle. Flying alone can be frightening when you realize that you are hanging out there all by yourself. And folk are looking and watching and waiting for you to fall. But in those times, you'll discover that God will take care of you. Oh, yes, he will. Same way that a mother eagle takes care of her little fledglings. I know sometimes it seems like you're stressed out by yourself, but I'm here to tell you God will take care of you. And the text reminds us, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Notice, Sister Tucker, eagles are known for their strength in their wings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The golden eagle known as the king birds. So they say his wingspan is about nine feet. Say he's only about 15 pounds in weight. But an eagle can fly at speed of 60 miles an hour and swoop down and pick up a prey that is twice his weight. Eagles have strength in their wings. Thank you, Jesus. God wants those wings of an eagle to have power in us. The eagle has such strength in its wings until he can look out. Eagles also have great vision. Watch a person that can't see anything until it's happy. I wonder if you're really an eagle person, but an eagle can look out 10 miles with his eyes and see the storm starting to rise on the horizon. And he'll mount up on the pinion of his strong wings and take to the air. Eagle, when the, when the storm gets there, the eagle has flown up over the storm. I was in the plane few years ago and pilot came on and said ladies and gentlemen fasten your seat belt he said there's rough turbulence ahead in other words he was saying there's some stormy weather ahead he said but what I'm going to do I'm going to fly up over the storm and we need to be ego people I'm, I'm, I'm tired of people that are all the time crying about problems sometimes you ought to be able to fly up over your problem Eagle gets upon his strong wings and flies over the storm. And we sing it, Deacon March. But if the eagle could sing, we sing and say, Hallelujah, the storm is passing over. But if the eagle could sing, he would say, Hallelujah, the storm is passing under. For he's flown up over the storm. I wish I had some eagle people in here. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I got to leave this alone. Be an eagle person is to be a person of power. You know, no, no, you know how to face the storms of life and how to get up over the storm. Don't fool yourself. Storms will arise in all of our lives. We better be careful how we treat people who are in the midst of a storm. Because before you realize it, a storm can be in your life. Yeah. You can't run from the storm. You've got to learn to confront the storm. Yeah, yeah. The fellow that knows how to confront the storm, he tells the devil, the Lord is on my side. Take your best shot. God has given us the wings of an eagle. Some of us in the church, I feel sorry for us. 
be around the church and been in the church 15 and 25 years and still have the wings of a dove. And crying, talking about if I had the wings of a dove, I would fly away to be at rest. No, you need the wings of an eagle. Tell the storm, storm, I've got strength. God has called you to be an eagle, so therefore don't be anything less. Don't settle for anything less. Be, Sister Emma, an eagle. Those there are those who will become mean. There are those who will become jealous of you because they don't have vision. They don't have strength. They'll try to make out of you what I call a chicken. You've got to know you are not a chicken. You've got to know that you are an eagle of a man that was in the mountains one time and he came across this egg strange looking egg a bigger than a normal chicken egg he didn't know what it was but he said well I'll take it home since I'm a chicken farmer and I'll put it in the incubator with the rest of my eggs and I'll have a chicken in a few weeks out popped this strange looking bird he didn't walk like, he, like chickens he, 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 he was big and huge. What the man said, I don't know what he is, said, but I'm going to raise him as a chicken. And see, I want you to know the world today doesn't know what you are. And the world is trying to raise you as a chicken. But you've got to know that there's something inside of you that's an eagle. And by chance, the man raised this bird for nine months in his chicken farm. This bird, this eagle, he ate chicken seeds. He ate chicken feed. He All he could hear was chicken talk. Chick, 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 and he come running when the other chickens run. But you got to know there's another language that an eagle has. One day a man, a stranger, came by the farm and he looked out and saw all these chickens. And in the midst of it he saw this unusual bird and he recognized it to be an eagle. He said to the owner, what are you doing with an eagle among your chickens? The farmer said to him, you might say he's an eagle. He said, but he's just nothing but a chicken. He said, all his life, all he's ever ate was chicken feed. All he's ever heard was chicken talk. And said, you might say he's strong and all that, but he doesn't fly. He walks around this yard all day long just like other chickens. I'm talking to somebody. Next morning, the visitor got up. He took the little eagle egg, took him to the side and began to talk to him and tell him, said, you are not a chicken. There's something in you that makes you what's called an eagle. Said, you don't supposed to spend the rest of your life walking around in a barn, y'all. And eating nothing. I'm talking to somebody. The Lord said, tell you, you don't supposed to spend the rest of your life in the bar. You don't supposed to spend the rest of your life in the drug house. You don't supposed to spend the rest of your life in a lot of foul language. God has a new life for you. The visitor took the eagle. Went out. Got out from around the chicken and some of us need to get out from around the chicken environment. He took him out from around the chickens. Talked to him and told him, say, you're an eagle. You were supposed to fly. When he kind of encouraged the eagle, the eagle flapped his wings, sister. Samuel, he flapped those wings. Just about the time he was ready to fly, the whole farmer showed up and threw out some chicken feed. And said, chick, 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 chick. And the eagle stopped flapping his wings and jumped down to the ground. Started eating chicken mess again. I'm saying something today. Some of you all that are about to fly. The devil is saying, chick, 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 chick. Just about time you make up your mind, I'm finished with this lifestyle. The devil throws out some chicken feed. But God said, they that wait on the Lord. You 
got to learn to wait on God. I'm going to let it alone, but the man didn't give up on the eagle. The next morning, he got Dr. Pearson the eagle, and he said, in order for me to get this eagle to recognize what he is, I've got to get him out from around the chickens. You see, you can't hang out with chickens from Monday to Saturday and didn't expect to be anointed on Sunday. But you got to get separated. God said if you separate yourself, I'll become your God. And I'll anoint you that you'll be able to reach a dying world. Somebody say yeah. to leave you. But the next morning he took the eagle up into the mountain and he began to talk to the eagle where there were no chickens around. I challenge you tomorrow to get in your secret closet. I challenge you to turn off CNN. I challenge you to turn your phone off and let God have a talk with you. He talked to the eagle and told him you are an individual that is different than a chicken. I'm not saying you are better than a chicken, but you are different than a chicken. The Bible said put a difference between holy and unholy. I'll leave it alone, but when the man talked to the eagle, the eagle began to flap its wings. I hear some flapping of wings in here. You see, you don't really take off until you flap your wings. I was in the airplane. I had paid my money. I got my ticket, Sister Griffin. They let me board the plane. And I sat down in my seat. But the plane didn't fly until it went out on the runway and began to rev up his engines. Some of us are getting ready to fly. But we got a rev up our engine. You see, if the power isn't there, you can't really take off. But when you flop your wings, when you rev up your engine, and you get thrust, you can fly up over your trouble. Talk about me! Just as much as you please. Laugh at me! Lie on me! But I'm getting ready! I didn't mean to be that long and that excited. But I ought to be able to get a witness in here. Not that there's a storm coming, but there's a storm here. We used to sing the song, Sister Tucker, that there's a storm out on the ocean. And said it's moving this way. But I want to inform you the storm has gotten here. It's not moving this way, but we are in the midst of the storm. You can't convince me, Brother Spoon, that we aren't in a storm. 
when I get up on a Sunday morning and turn on the news and the first thing I hear on the news is that a woman is on the train on a train filled with passengers and a devil man demon possessed man decides to rape her and he raped her spoon on the train with all these passengers sitting there and nobody did anything you telling me we're not in a storm when you can be riding on the highway minding your own business and somebody cut in front of you and if you blow your horn they'll get out and shoot your brains out we are in a storm but God said to tell his people today he called you to be eagles and you got to learn to mount up on the pinion of your wings and get over the storm I've reached a place now, Sister Woods. It doesn't hurt me like it used to. But I've reached a place now where really I don't care too much what you think about me. It depends on how I feel. If I feel like wearing the same suit six weeks, I'll wear it. I don't know about yours, but this one is paid for. Some of us are worried about the storm of opinions. Worried about what people are thinking, what you drive. Drive what makes you happy. Drive what makes you comfortable, Brother Clark. I don't have long to be here, so I need to get up on my wings and see wonder what down below. What's the sense in you being an eagle? And God bless you to go to New York City and all you do is sleep in the hotel for five days. You're down in Washington, D.C. in the midst of history. And all you want to do is go to the store. God wants you to get up. You are eagles. I was in the other day in the, in the train station. In the train station, I saw a bird. I believe it was a sparrow or it might have been a pigeon, but it flew in the train station. You cannot deny that it was flying, but it's hindered. There's a whole big world out there for that pigeon or for that sparrow to experience. And they think all the world consists of the 200 by 100 foot train station. Some of us are the same way now. The devil has confused our minds to make us believe that the only joy in life is getting high. Only joy in life is getting drunk. I heard Peter said they're drunk, but not like you suppose. I know you're looking funny at me on YouTube, but I'm not crazy. I'm just as sound in my mind as I can be. I'm just a little loud in here, but if, if I go to the funeral parlor tomorrow, I know how to quiet down. God called you to be an eagle. Don't settle for being a chicken. Don't settle for this chicken feed the world is trying to feed you. Know that God has more for you. Know that the Lord has said, if you wait on me, people are bothering you. People are trying to mess you up. But God said, wait on me. They that wait on me. You say, but pastor, I'm weak. God said, you're weak because you're not waiting on me. Wait on me. They that wait on me. I will renew them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm an eagle. 
I'm an eagle. My situation right now, I might be in a barnyard existence, but I'm an eagle. <laughs> I might be surrounded by chickens, but I'm an eagle. You told me I was an eagle. There's greatness in me. And as I prayed today, daughter, son, father, wife, husband, that's listening to me, tell yourself I'm an eagle. Tell yourself God did not just speak me into existence, but he made me. There's greatness inherent in me. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait until he renews my strength. I'm going to be able to run and don't get weary. I'm going to be able to walk and whatever is going on in life will not cause me to faint. Your blessing be upon your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To those of you that tuned us in today, we thank God for you. Pray that you will uh, hit Giblify and uh, be a blessing to the church if you can. The Lord would tremendously bless you. He that soweth, the Bible said, bountifully shall reap bountifully. But if you hold everything and you don't sow anything, you won't get any more than what you have. The Lord bless you until next Sunday. His presence and his peace be with you. God bless you. I thank God. To help.